So I'm representing the work of many people in Microsoft today, Arista Network and Intel. We are going to talk about uh, Bluebird, a project which has effectively introduced the new generation of high performance bare metal workloads in the cloud. Bluebird has been running for more than three years and the number of supported workloads increases every day. Uh, I will start by talking about Azure Scale, then about bare metal workloads, what they are and why we need them, then the evolution of Bluebird and the control plane, then the programmable switch and the customization that we have created through the P4 pipeline. And I will conclude with performance result and conclusion and future work. Azure is Microsoft public cloud platform with infrastructure service, I guess, like compute, storage, and networking. Now the services on top of it, app services on top of that. You can build big data services, machine learning services, and we have a wide variety of platform services on top. Azure is the second largest public cloud in the world, and it's still growing fast. It is present in more than 60 different regions globally, and we have hundreds of data centers, billions of servers, and as a result of this scale, there is a never-ending supply of interesting scale problems on the network. So what is a bare metal infrastructure? It is an infrastructure as a service that offers dedicated hardware that is certified and tested for a select sect of enterprise uh, workloads. The need for it, for it stems from the fact that certain workloads in the enterprise require special architecture, certified hardware, they might incorporate technologies like data protection, business continuity, uh, that are not built for an hypervised environment. Furthermore, they can be sensitive to latencies, noisy neighbor, require more control over management and maintenance activity. This is a high level overview of a typical bare metal infrastructure, or at least what is used to be before Bluebird. Customer on-prem have their own data center and they connect through ISP and they form an L2 peering with our public edge. So they get into the virtual network and from there uh, they connect to a dedicated edge and then to a bare metal, which is an Colo data center. Um, Bluebird scope um, focuses on the communication between VM and bare metals and tries to improve on the limitation of the existing model, specifically on the throughput being limited by the intermediate devices, the high latency due to the number of ops, encapsulation and processing in general, and the expensive and, some, and time consuming onboarding process um, of new hardware in a co-located data center. So we set for ourselves to tackle issue, these issues while at the same time setting also other goals like multi-tenancy support, seamless integration, and more in general provide other features available for VMs which many are already familiar with. Here we can see the first generation of network topology for colo-based VM and VM communication. So the bare metal network communicates through the gateway via the dedicated edge and the gateway advertises his VIPs through a software load balancer, SLB. Um, the gateway and the VM reside in the same network by separate subnet and everything on top of the line at the dedicated edge is SDN controlled with, um, with the communication from dedicated edge to gateway being VXLAN and from gateway to VM being NVGRE. Um, we also have like um, several services, uh, the resource provider which pushes virtual network policies to mapping service, gateway manager, which in turn configures the gateway and the dedicated edge uh, that um, exchange routes with each other through EBGP. The, the biggest bottleneck to this model is the gateway which run on a VM whose throughput uh, is nowhere near to 100 gigabits per second which was required at a point in time by some bare metal workloads. Uh, another thing to note is that 
Uh, mapping is in, in this context, when we use the word mappings, we indicate VXLAN statements that are made of customer address CA, fiscal address PA, BNI, and MAC. And I'll use mapping and routes interchangeably since that is the only type of routes we're dealing with. Which brings us to the next step of the evolution. At this point, Advances NA6 gave us the opportunity to adopt a programmable tour and collapse the functionality of the gateway into the dedicated edge. Um, under, under this model, the dedicated edge is programmed with static slash 32 routes, with destination being the CA of the VM and next hop being the PA of the host. Although the gateway could have been removed in this model, it is kept as an overflow backup path in case of failure. The next transformative step is Bluebird. Bare metal NVMs now resides in the same data center and network. The trick here is that the bare metal NIC is deployed in a subnet in the same virtual network as the VNet. And this change had several advantages also on compared to the latest iteration of, of, of the co-located model. And um, there is a reduced number of ops and latency, uh, clear reduced infrastructure costs uh, due to the reduced network complexities. And the device that replaced the, the dedicated edge is much simpler, cheaper, and more efficient. Um, the only drawback is that the the mapping capacity is only a fraction of what, what was possible with the edge device at that point, and we also uh, address this, this as part of our project. So having removed the gateway and the edge device also meant that we needed to an alternative way to host the SDN logic. Two alternatives were considered. One was an agent on the door and the other one on a, a separate service uh, the agent on the tours was discarded because it would compete with for resources with latency sensitive operations on the tour and resource consumption would increase over time as requirement change. Uh, on the other hand, the, the service doesn't have any of these drawbacks and he has the additional advantages of being more fault tolerant and, re and having a reduced deployment time. And so we introduced this service that we we named Bluebird service, BBS. Okay, BBS is a lightweight multi-tenant stateless microservice that configures the Tor with virtual network policies for each customer. Uh, each policy is represented as a JSON object that specifies the Tor's desired state. Uh, 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 Azure, Azure SDN services push their goals, goal state to, blue, blue, to Bluebird message queue from the message queue, they go to the orchestrator, which parses and consolidate the goal state uh, into per, uh, per tor configurations. From there, the per tor configuration go to the device, to the device abstraction layer, which is responsible for separating the business logic from the tor specific, store model specific implementation. So at this point, uh, the configuration gets transformed in a number of, of, of commands which are then executed on the tour. The command set ex uh, executed by Bluebird is limited only to the bare metal provisioning operations. This is done to avoid any interference with automation system like uh, software upgrading or traffic shifting. Uh, there are other notable functionalities about Bluebird, like the limits on Tor resource utilization per VNet. Um, every VNet has, can potentially occupy the entire memory on the Tor by generating an extremely high number of routes. Uh, this limit can be overridden, and in case of VNet that are um, significantly large, uh, we also have the possibility of uh, deploying a, a dedicated tour. Uh, the service is also zonal and redundant. Uh, Azure, um, Azure regions are divided in availability zone where each zone has, uh, can comprise one or more data center. A Bluebird is deployed in each zone on a service fabric uh, ring 
um, which is uh, divided in a series of partition with each partition having a number, um, a number of replicas. It's also resilient to disaster and in case of disaster at a zonal level um, service uh, that have a regional scope um, can drive the, re the can drive uh, the rehydration of the state. Um, it is resilient to tour failures, and in case of such an event, it can migrate all the bare metal resources that are, un that are under that tour to a new tour, and it performs full and partial reconciliation based on unseen checks and specific events which invalidate the internal state, like for instance, a tour reboot or a failover of the, of the services itself. Uh, it can support also multiple tour, has a high availability configuration and is responsible for uh, consistency uh, across all the tour. So if we look at how the flow from VM to VM and VM to VM works, uh, that is pretty much um, standard VXLAN with a couple of notable exceptions. Um, so uh, when the packet leaves a bare metal and reaches the tour is matched against a VFP whose entries are extended with a VTAP, a VNI, and, and a MAC address of the VM. That MAC address of the VM is utilized to overwrite the inner destination MAC of the packet and, and that destination MAC is then used in the VFP to switch to the correct VM. On the opposite direction, the VFP populates the MAC with a dummy MAC, and in this case, the, nor the tour needs to ignore the dummy MAC, and we use masking for doing that. Everything is programmed through before, before pipeline, of course. And the other change that we have done is that we have modified the way the VXLAN generate the source port and because the VFP needed to identify the packets that were originating from a bare metal, and in that case, we're imposing a range which is known to the VFP. Other pipeline customization that we have done, we have reduced the IPv4 and IPv6 unicast route table size, making room for additional space for the VXLAN VTAP table so to increase the scale of more than one order of magnitude from 16K to 192K. And thanks to this additional space, we have also extended the VXLAN network identifier to 32 bits and added support for the IPv6 underlay. So even, even though we increased the size of the VTAP table, that was not sufficient in view of the potential future growth. And so we were facing two decisions. One was to onboard the new ASIC, which at the time was the Tofino V2, and, or innovate on the existing ASIC. So, but because of the onboarding time, we decided to go with the second option. And so we introduced a system of route cache, which reassigned and used entries in hardware to other active users. And, and the result is that we had an increase that is potentially five-fold over over the 192K mappings. The, the route cache uses the software forwarding engine SFE, which is a DPDK enabled packet processing function that is provided by the CPU. Packets that are CPU bound use a two times 10 gigabits ethernet interfaces connecting the Tofino to the CPU to reach the SFE. And there's a software agent on the tour, which monitors hardware entries on the ASIC and moves the inactive ones to the SFE. We also use the concept of hit bit uh, to indicate both hardware and, SFE and software entries which are exercised by a packet. Uh, when um, the eviction algorithm that we use uh, is the, least, the simple least recently used LRU, we chose this algorithm because it doesn't need any state to be maintained and there's no further processing required. We also consider older uh, eviction algorithms like uh, tracking TCP flows or tracking flows that carried the most traffic volume. But we rejected both eventually because they need an additional agent that tracks TCP packets with flagged SFR and, 
and storing flows is also expensive because in this case, it comprises both source IP port and destination IP port. And in an outing context, we only need the latter, so the rest would be um, just, over, just overhead. So we can now look at the performance result, which uh, are based on data collected in both labs and, and in production. Uh, on the left side, we can see the CDF for routes utilization. Uh, what what can, we can conclude out of that is that most of the routes are not, are not used most of the time. As a matter of fact, 20 to 25% of the routes are used at any given time. And, and, and that explains why we believe there is a a potential uh, scale increase to up to five times. Uh, on the right side, we have um, a graph showing the forward forwarding time for both hardware and software. Uh, in this experiment, we had disabled the agent uh, migrating the flows from, uh, from software to hardware to measure the latency for the software forwarded, forwarded flows. And they perform consistently under nine microseconds. At Sorry, at, at, around, at around two minutes mark, um, we enabled the agent and, 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 the, and the flow was moved to hardware in a fraction of a second. And that usually is enough, especially in our case where we only handle TCP flows, um, for, the, for that to be completed before the TCP three-way end shake. Um, in, this graph we see um, time to forward packet as a functional frame size. Um, this, the performance from port to port is also very consistent. In this case, we have less than a microseconds uh, for, for all cases, but the 9,216 bytes. Um, the performance is deterministic across all cases of packets manipulation required for our workloads. During every traffic load, there's only minimal difference or between the min and max throughput values. And on the right side, uh, we measure throughput as a functional frame size and the right and, and shows that there's also there, the performance is very consistent with the sole exception being the packets of 256 bytes. And that is because the, 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 the test tool was not included in the preamble in the throughput. And in this case, the preamble has a higher relative uh, size compared to the payload. Um, so finally, the, to conclude so far, the focus of Bluebird was to introduce the bare metal entity uh, to become part of the, of the virtual network and the same uh, data center as the VM and to provide low latency, high throughput uh, at, at line rate. But Bluebird is constantly evolving. And as we introduce new workloads, there are always new opportunities opportunities of improvements. And there are definitely many improvements that we are planning to introduce in the future. Thanks.